<clears throat> but, uh, hey guys, uh, what's going on? This is Erkin from HDD Recovery. I feel like uh, this has been so uh, long since I've posted anything on this channel. Uh, it's summer, it's hot, and I'm not sick or anything like that. Just really, really uh, busy at the shop. That explains uh, the absence from this channel. Also, uh, my previous attempt to run this uh, 30 days, uh, 30 videos in 30 days challenge was pretty uh, exhausting. It wasn't in the sense that like I completely burnt out, but it just when uh, when it was, when I got back from Mexico, I was like, hmm, I need to start uh, posting again. Uh, things one after another uh, just kind of kept getting in the way and uh, when you do things on a regular basis but you just kind of like go out of that element for a couple of weeks it just really becomes super tough to get back into it and uh, the time kept going and going and I kept filming and filming I'm accumulating so much unedited um, content that still needs to be processed that I'm like, um, it's it's really starting to get overwhelming and I don't even know when I will have time to edit it. If, even though there's tons of very, very exciting content in there. And uh, next uh, few weeks, I'll be trying to do my best to organize things, kind of get it into my flow. I'm not making any promises in terms of posting every day. That's probably not gonna happen. It takes away a lot of my time and energy and gives me a lot of stress. So we're going to keep it light, but I can tell you for sure that uh, this purpose of this video is to break the ice. So really, like, there's nothing um, in the way of posting, just shop is busy. Uh, there's a lot of platter damage cases, there is a lot of uh, long, uh, hard to solve SSD cases, there's a lot of long, hard to solve uh, flash memory cases. All that adds up. Let's just start with a simple Q&A video. I'll just cut away all the scrolling and things like that. But I'll answer some of the questions that I haven't been uh, able to answer online yet. And some of them are really, really valid questions. First one is from uh, one day ago. I got some questions about your work, your job. Uh, what do you think about data recovery in the next few years? Will it come to an end? Uh, I just started out in this job. The number of cases deemed unrepairable is getting bigger and bigger by the day. Uh, people using SSDs and unique HDDs are getting bigger and bigger. It's a great question because this is something that I keep asking myself because uh, getting into this field, when I got into it, uh, I really just did not see an end to this industry. But right now I kind of do. I'm not too worried about uh, things like cloud taking over uh, and becoming a mainstream uh, storage, uh, at least not anytime soon. Um, what uh, I see making this industry not uh, dead but way more challenging are the way that manufacturers approach development of new devices now. Uh, those who are in the field know uh, that it's been very, very, very tough, including yourself, uh, know that it's been very, very tough uh, to um, get uh, good results on modern drives uh, due to hardware encryptions due to uh, very, very, very high density of the disks. Um, drives that you can buy right now in a two and a half inch format reach six terabytes or maybe even more. And uh, these are the types of things that are uh, on top of all, you uh, now facing a lot of um, online information that including this channel that may make things look easy for people to attempt and repair themselves. We've been getting um, if we look back a few years ago, uh, we would be getting maybe 5% of drives that had been opened before. Right now, the number of open drives that we get is over 40%. So, <laughs> I don't know uh, where people get this idea that fixing drives and getting data recovered is easy, but it's definitely not easy. And uh, the amount of damage you're doing to your drive by opening it up yourself at home uh, is uh, way more than what the drive can do to itself most of the time, all right? Even if it looks like you haven't done anything, you just opened it up and closed the lid back in, uh, that's still probably gonna do something that will drive the cost up, uh, will require full decontamination and inspection of all the disks and so on and so forth. 
But to answer the question, uh, I really just don't see an end uh, coming up anytime soon. Like what PC3000 could achieve on the latest update uh, will solve things for a lot of people who haven't had uh, very much success with these new devices lately. I think things are looking more on the brighter side. The only, the only difference is, is that you will kind of do, like the difference between getting into this industry now versus uh, let's say if you jumped into it 10 years ago, is that unfortunately for new guys, uh, you're starting off with hard drives that are very, very, very uh, hard to work with and they break fast. So majority of your work is gonna be evolved around Rosewoods, evolved around spyglass drives, chargers, palmers, that kind of stuff, because that's what sells the most. That's what's available to everybody. That's what everybody brings in for recovery these days. Days of Shreks and Firebirds, unfortunately, are close to being over, and that was easy money for the industry. I, I'm not gonna lie. Recovering uh, data from two terabyte Western Digital Passports from um, you know, 2013, we could do it with the eyes blindfolded. Um, I even tried once and I got close. It wasn't on the client's drive. It was a test. It was after that movie uh, called Bird Box, where everybody was posting uh, Bird Box challenges on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, I tried to swap heads on uh, Shrek LT with a uh, blindfold on. And uh, I got it to uh, ID, um, I got it to, there was one head I think I damaged, <laughs> but that video didn't make the cut. I'm gonna look for that footage. Again, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's my problem. I'm trying to film too much and I don't wanna outsource my editing. I really just don't see it as a good way uh, to go about it. And I don't wanna make videos unedited also. It makes it less interesting for me. I do wanna keep this content something that I will look back on and uh, watch and it would maybe put a smile on my face. Every now and then I watch my old videos and then they do make me smile. I'm like, wow, man, this is cool. Like you started there and now you're here. Well, but to answer your question, sir, uh, industry is not ending, it's just got challenging and you'll need to uh, work your ass off a little bit to get ahead because if you don't, you'll be behind. If you're having problems with uh, modern drives that are uh, not getting solved by traditional methods and by traditional methods, I mean you swap heads on them when you think you need to swap heads on them and they still don't work, chances are there's potentially platter damage. You need to know how to deal with platter damage, how to address it and how to navigate around it if you don't know, best solution I can offer to you is find somebody who knows how to do it. So at least you can recoup some of that revenue from the clients that you would turn down and uh, tell them that the data is uh, unrecoverable, for example. Uh, we've been having an amazing track record with platter damage cases where not all of the data can be recovered, but you never know your client's needs and specifically uh, what they're willing to pay for uh, even partial recovery in some cases until you give them that option. Uh, so if you need our help, check the link in the description. There will be an answer for you there. Contact us if you need platter damage recovery on any type of device. The next question is, is it possible to copy physical image using JTAG without chip off? Is it possible to copy only logical image using JTAG? Uh, yes, so you can uh, access a physical image with anything other than NAND protocol. Uh, JTAG will not offer you that. You will not be able to obtain physical image of the device. The next question is from uh, Dan. Uh, how much would it generally cost to fix a two terabyte Seagate drive that has this issue? And it refers to one of the videos where uh, um, I show a quick uh, repair tip on how to get your non-spinning drive to spin up and possibly give you an opportunity to copy the data out. Um, then we don't offer uh, uh, hard drive repair services, even though this case would totally be up for repair. But in order to repair a drive with electrical damage, you need to, uh, you know, make that drive reliable again. I don't know how reliable that drive would be again if the diode is removed. Uh, if it's removed and left out, uh, it will um, only last until the next power surge and then something more serious will uh, burn and then you would be looking at much, much higher uh, pricing for data recovery because the problem would be much more serious. 
uh, that uh, TVS diode in place is for a specific reason. And that reason, uh, if it blows out, uh, is achieved. <laughs> so you need to replace it. I'm not looking forward to replacing diodes for any type of money. It's just not my field. I don't repair drives. So in, in order to answer your question, how much is going to cost to fix it? It will not cost anything. We're simply not going to do it. That video is for, uh, uh, you know, do your own research purposes. If you want to get access to your data by performing this, you can do that at home easily enough. If you want us to do it, we're going to do it the proper way. It's going to get powered on. Uh, once uh, the issues with the board are addressed, we're going to clone it and we're going to transfer the data out to a new device and send it back to you on the new device. That's going to cost $400 plus the media. Uh, that's what we charge for basic imaging. If you want to send me a brand new drive and you say that you need a clone off of it, Still going to charge $400 for the clone. That's what we charge for imaging. It's basic cost. We don't have any pricing less than that. So uh, next question. Uh, hey, thank you for detailed videos. I have a Western Digital 500 gig. Uh, then it lists the model. Uh, I want to swap uh, its heads too, but I can't find the exact model for a decent price. Can I use other model heads? If so, which models? Uh, generally, um, to find the compatibility uh, you know there are different vendors will use different uh, matching uh, criteria. Uh, the best thing I can recommend doing and I don't mind sharing this if I find a link to it on donordrives.com guys they listed an amazing uh, um, guide that you can use for matching up uh, donors and that can give you an idea of what uh, you know corners you can um, cut uh, in order to get a proper donor. Now, if your drive is coming out of coming out from um, an external enclosure, unfortunately, finding uh, a compatible unit will be a little bit more difficult because, in my practice, uh, places online that sell uh, my my passport drives or uh, elements WD drives that's supposed to be in the enclosure. If they sell them without the enclosure, they're aiming at uh, data recovery companies as their purchasers uh, so <laughs> as their clients and they know what this is going to cost so they're going to be marking them up uh, accordingly so change uh, chances of finding that drive for cheaper are going to be smaller but i'm going to put a link to that uh, a guide for matching drives in the description of this video so check it out man and um, yeah hopefully it can uh, help you how do you maintain platter alignment with this type of platter extractor? Um, I can tell you one thing for sure, that microscopic alignment on most hard drives does not exist. There is, uh, it's, it's not how the drives operate. And in most cases, uh, technological mode that we use for disk imaging will close their eyes on whatever misalignment issues there might be. We can control each individual head when we're imaging and uh, even load up the drive using only one head. So we don't need to have anything aligned because if we're addressing one head at a time, it doesn't have to be aligned with anything because you're reading one surface only. Um, but uh, to answer the question generally for alignment, we notch uh, drives on the side with the marker uh, line and line them up to that marker line once we assemble everything back. What you need to not mess up uh, is the order and orientation. Don't flip them upside down. Don't mix them up between the one and then the two and then keep them in the sequence that they came out of. <laughs> and don't put them backwards. Uh, that's all I can say. Oh, this one is good. Uh, hi, Erkin. I've uh, been on and off watching your channel for years now. Great stuff. Thanks, Joe. Uh, I wanted to ask if you recommend any brands for SD cards over others e or if there are particular ones to avoid I can't seem to find any info about brand reliability aside from anecdotal stories uh, and this goes same way for uh, hard drives or any other storage uh, media that exists out there um, it's a great question uh, there is no uh, better or worse a device when it comes up to reliability yes of course you can buy um, uh, a flash drives and memory cards and hard drives that are just complete time bombs and will uh, absolutely leave you stranded with no data uh, at any possible minute or time. Uh, 
uh, those are usually the ones that are not branded. Not branded cars that don't have like anything that uh, reputable, reputable behind them usually tend to be uh, refurbished products uh, that uh, NAND manufacturers and controller manufacturers or even card manufacturers will um, put through their uh, quality control test. And if it fails, they're not going to just throw that out because the amount of uh, the percentage of the production that actually does not meet requirements uh, for their um, quality control uh, is very very high they will be losing a lot of money if they didn't do anything with that junk so what they do is usually they sell it to Asia where it gets uh, you know put through like a self-test process where all the defects that are evident on the device they get hidden but it's only a matter of time until new ones come out uh, and uh, that's why these uh, devices are very unstable. They lose data very easily. Most of the time you will find them in the form of a promotional devices. They can, we get these emails all the time and I mentioned it in many videos before. Uh, they, would, uh, they would email us and say, listen, we have these promotional flash drives. We can put your company logo on it. So where do you find these flash drives and memory cards? Usually they're given them away at the venues, uh, dealerships. Like I went to a dealer uh, last time, uh, giving like giving uh, my car as a trade-in, I think, and <laughs> they uh, they try to sell me a new one, and they give you like this promotional package, and inside of it there was a there was a key fob uh, flash drive, uh, flash drive that looks like a key fob of the cars that they make now, and uh, I know for a fact that that's not something that they. Uh, um, you know, put a lot of uh, money into uh, reliability of the device, chances are it's a crappy, crappy quality memory inside and it's just gonna die one day. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, stay away from anything promotional, stay away from anything that's no name brand. Uh, devices that I would recommend are SanDisk, uh, just not 170, if, you if you're talking about memory cards, 170 megabytes per second speed uh, SanDisk cards right now use LDPC algorithm. If you were to send it in for a chip off, there is no place on earth I know of that can recover this right now. So if you buy in SanDisk, try to look for speed like 100 megabytes or less uh, for speed of writing. Um, aside from that, Lexar, Sony, um, Kingston maybe even is not that bad. Uh, you know, just something that's been working on cards and flash memory consistently. It's going to be good enough. If they're putting their brand on it, uh, it's probably going to be a, like a slightly better version. But it can still fail. So you need to have a multiple uh, devices housing the same data. So if it's a memory card and the camera, dump the footage out as soon as you're done. Don't wait until the card is full or something like that. Because what often can happen, even if you go and buy uh, a proper uh, brand, uh, as you might think, uh, somewhere online, uh, all it takes to make a fake for a memory card is to put a sticker on it with somebody's name as a brand and copy the label. I bought a bunch of these cards and uh, I'll uh, even maybe make a video in the future about it. But uh, the thing is, is that if it's a fake card, chances are it's not even a true capacity. So you would go and buy like a 128 gigabyte SanDisk card, for example, uh, for five bucks uh on aliexpress or something like that you know i don't know if i'm not i'm just saying this uh theoretically and um uh they would uh, that card most likely is not a 128 gig uh card uh chances are that card is way 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 smaller and reprogrammed uh through controller to show a different uh size uh, where in fact physical capacity of it would be much smaller, maybe like 8 gigs or 16 gigs. So what I'm saying is that up until you reach that physical uh, borderline of capacity, your device may still operate fine and let you use it for X amount of time. But uh, once you reach that limit, uh, the card will fold itself and chances of recovering it will be very, very slim. So um that's hopefully answers uh, your question and thanks for watching man i really appreciate anybody who uh posts comments saying that i've been following you for years guys thank you so much i mean even if you're new here and this is the kind of stuff you like subscribe i want to answer this question uh because i do get a lot of requests for that and they end up 
often not even being answered because we're going to probably set something in a form of an automatic reply for this. But unfortunately, this is not something we want to dip into, even if there is a slight chance of recovery. Uh, I don't want to sound arrogant, but uh, this is, in my practice, more times than not, this is not going to be a, a, a case that uh, will be solved. Uh, so the question goes like this. Great video. Could you please answer my questions? Question number one. If, you, if a micro SD card is cracked in two pieces, can the data be recovered from it? Uh, interesting question because the answer depends on where that crack is. There is no uh, definitive answer, yes or no. In some cases, indeed, you can recover data from uh, physically fractured, physically cracked, snapped in half, not half, but snapped um, micro SD cards. The problem is, is that inside of the micro SD card, there is an integrated circuit that contains controller, bunch of wires, and uh, possibly some capacitors even. And uh, a big part of it is a uh, NAND crystal. That NAND crystal probably takes up about like 90% of the real estate inside of the card. So if your card is snapped in the middle in half, forget it. Nobody will ever be able to recover any data from it. It's not physically possible. But uh, sometimes if the card is cracked where the uh, interface is or where that little uh, edge to pull the card out from the slot, if that snaps off, maybe it just damages uh, some uh, auxiliary components, but not the NAND crystal. If you can still communicate through NAND protocol with the NAND inside of the micro SD card, you can get the data potentially recovered from it. I don't want to take on projects like that because I've shipped a bunch over the years, and to this day, I haven't seen a single one that, that, that came in so fortunate that the stress line was not across the crystal. Crystal, in my personal experience, was always damaged. And, uh, you know, it ends up taking up money on shipping, return shipping, and things like that. So for fractured cards, guys, uh, there are maybe other places in the world that offer this. We don't. Um, are Play Store uh, photo recovery apps are safe to use? I mean, do they collect users' photo and videos? Honestly, that's not a question I can answer for you, my friend. I don't know um, what those recovery apps are. I never used anything uh, on, mob on mobile device to recover any content directly. Um, so I don't have any firsthand experience with that. Sorry, I can answer that question for you. Moving on to the next question. Oh, there's a good question here. Hello, I once heard or uh, read that when you replace certain parts on HDDs, the parts need to come from the same model and DCM of the new HD. Uh, like for instance, and a couple of models and DCM numbers are listed. Also, is there a torque specifications for the screws that uh, has to be exact? Um, question is exact same as I already uh, answered to the one with the link I will be providing in the description box for uh, a donor drive uh, guide. Uh, but the second part of the question has not been answered before, and it's also a valid question. Uh, torque specifications, no. I don't use any torque specifications. Make sure you can tighten the uh, uh, screws as, uh, as if they're going to be holding on. For the, for the seal on the gasket, keep in mind that it's a silicone-based gasket. You can just screw it in so just so it's firm enough to close. That's all you need to worry about. But and on the spindle, if you and I hope you don't just do it without any uh, uh, experience or knowledge on how this uh, should be approached. But on the spindle, for the screws that hold uh, the platters together, these need to be tightened as tight as you can go. Make sure you have a good screwdriver that won't strip your 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 screws. Uh, because that can happen e easily uh, with uh, poor quality uh, hardware uh, tools. Um, that's one thing I wanted to mention. Yeah, so for uh, heads and uh, internal parts, I tighten them as much as I can. Uh, for the flex cable, obviously it's plastic and rubber gasket. Also, use your common sense. But there is no guide for how much torque each screw needs to be tied up. You just kind of use your common sense. Thanks for sharing. For single platter HDDs, I was wondering 
if it's okay to flip the platter to the side that does not have a scratch is that possible are the data red on either side the same it's not possible because if you flip your disc the orientation and which it's uh, um, the direction of in which it's going to rotate is also gonna flip so if you take uh, if you take a disc uh, that spins counterclockwise and you flip it uh, upside down and uh, you spin it counterclockwise it will go in the opposite direction so no uh, you can't do that and I don't know if you would really want to uh, I you would want to replace the head assembly not uh, um, not flip the the orientation of the disc upside down and you need to modify that head assembly if there is a scratch uh, amazing video are you IPC certified or an engineer I'm neither uh, I honestly just don't even know what IPC is um, but that goes to that that the reason why I picked this question is not to say no I don't I'm not certified or no I'm not engineer uh, uh, this uh, shows that data recovery doesn't matter what background you may have it can be suited for you as long as you like it and as long as you find passion in it and uh, whatever you do that uh, brings you joy in life is probably the best career you can choose especially if it can support you and your lifestyle there is uh, absolutely nothing best but to have a uh, not have a feeling that you, you're being forced to do something that you don't want to do to earn a buck and uh, I'm so grateful to find this industry um, It did really fall into my lap and I will be making a separate video about it one day um, but um, honestly like if uh, If you want to do data recovery, you don't need to have uh, an engineering degree. You don't need to be IPC certified. You don't need to do to have any of that you don't need to have any degree period you can learn the tools because the tools that you're going to work with in data recovery industry are not the tools that you ever going to be prepped to learn at any sort of uh post-secondary education um you know facility you're not going to learn it in uni you're not going to learn it in any college this is not the subject that you go and learn you're going to learn it in private courses and you can buy those if you have the money uh anytime you don't need to have any background but the best experience that you're gonna get is from working on these devices and understanding the material that you will find in the manuals that comes with tools of these devices that's the best you can really do for yourself uh, when it comes down to data recovery uh, good morning I'm an admirer of your services uh, and I follow your videos I saw that instead of using a cabin it uses a vacuum type system uh, would you be able to post a schematic of the vacuum cleaner um, and where to find it especially the inlet mouth that is on the table thank you very much in advance success always in your activities well thank you very much for watching it's uh, really uh, means a lot uh, I will post links uh, to uh, the uh, lockline um, exhaust system that I use I bought it all from Amazon uh, and the lock line uh, system that clicks together and can be folded in any way possible almost uh, I will also include the link for you in the description and probably will add it to the uh, to the list of things that I use on the regular so that in the future if this question comes up just check the reference in the description box usually all the things I use uh, I list there although it does need an update 10 questions guys I mean uh, I really thought that this video is gonna be only 10 minutes and we're into half an hour now hopefully we you enjoyed it and I'm gonna cut away minimal parts uh, just to make it simple uh, but like I just want to say that uh, I'm back <laughs> I'm gonna be posting new stuff and to break the ice I made this video for you so that it will not be so somewhat weird next time I post uh, glad to be here Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.